In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can upgrade the Ender 5 Plus from its original stock drive gear to a dual drive gear like this one. I mentioned this in my initial review video and someone asked for me to do a follow-up video explaining exactly how to do this. So that's what we have here. Let's go. Now, this isn't a particularly difficult tutorial, but there are a few hardware and technical steps that we need to address. So I will go over these in a little bit of detail and then hopefully that will give you the confidence to have a crack yourself. There are a range of different drive gears you could choose to upgrade with. So I'm not gonna go into crazy detail because each one will vary slightly. But again, hopefully this will just give you the confidence to have a crack yourself. Four steps for this upgrade is first, remove the existing extruder drive gear. Two, install the new extruder drive gear. Three, and this is optional depending on the drive gear you are installing, but reverse the stepper direction so that it goes in the correct way for a dual drive gear extruder. And then finally, update the E-steps so that the stepper motor is turning the correct amount for the volume of material you are expecting. So here's what you're going to need to perform this upgrade. Firstly, you will of course need some sort of improved extruder drive gear. I've got here a Bontex style dual drive extruder, which was about 15 pounds on Amazon. Most likely you're going to need a drill and also a range of drill bits like so. You are also going to need some Allen keys, but these should come with your printer, so you should be okay on that one. Right, let's dive straight in. I have previously installed a dual drive gear on this ender, so I've had to retrace my steps as it were uh, to get back as close to how it was in the beginning. When your printer arrives, it will have this single drive gear uh, attached here. And that's the bit we're trying to replace because it really is a bit rubbish. So the first step you're going to need to do is completely remove this single drive gear. And that's just a case of undoing the screws that attach it to the extruder motor. So here you simply take the necessary Allen key and go about removing the screws that attach the drive gear to the stepper motor in behind. I've already done this, but you will also have to detach the Bowden tube that is attached to the drive gear, uh, ready to put into the new drive gear when you install it. So when you've removed the stock drive gear, it will look like this. You'll have the metal back plates and the uh, filament runout sensor still there in place. And your stepper motor will look like this. Now at some point Creality switched from the little screws that used to attach this drive gear onto the stepper motor uh, to a, an actual sort of compression friction weld and what that means is you can't just unscrew this little geared nut anymore to remove it you're going to actually have to drill it off and you'll see I've already done that on this one and you can see the cutout there at the top and that's where the drill is going to come involved obviously do that really carefully i actually found when i was doing it it helped to do a really small pilot hole and then a slightly larger screw hole afterwards to enable me to remove the nuts like so once you've removed the nuts from the stepper motor you can then go ahead and install the specific nuts for your new drive gear and you can see here's one I did earlier. <laughs> this is then ready to go back into the mount when you install the new drive gear. As I said, for this tutorial, I'm using the Bontex style dual drive gear. And what I found when trying to install it back onto the mounting plate was that this top section was actually too high and it was hitting into the existing screw. So again, another step for the drill, I removed the screw that was in on the far right hand side, drilled another hole in the center, and then reinstalled the screw onto the T-nut behind. That way, this area here is free. And when this goes back on, it goes back on tightly and there's nothing in the way. So with that now all ready to go, I could 
set about installing the new extruded drive gear, putting the extruder stepper motor in behind, back in its place, the new drive gear, dual drive gear on the front, like so, and then using the larger included screws to go all the way through, back through the mount, and into the stepper motor behind. This point, it can all be tightened up and the Bowden tube can be reconnected if you've not already done that. Now at this point, what you would find if you went to extrude is you'd notice two things. One, extruding is going in the wrong direction and two, the amount you tell the printer to extrude is different to the amount that comes out. So luckily when it comes to stepper motors, it's pretty easy to reverse the direction just by swapping the wires. If you have access to the board, you could just rotate the whole pin and put it back in and that would effectively reverse the stepper direction. But on these printers, it's a bit of a pain to do that. So all you have to do is reverse the connectors of one coil. After checking the technical diagram for this printer, it follows that the first and the third cable are one pair and the second and the fourth cable are the other pair. Stepper motors have two pairs going to them. All you have to do is swap the first and the third cable and that should reverse the direction of the current. If it doesn't, drop me a message in the comments and I will help you out. Okay, so at this point, you should now have your initial extruder drive gear removed, your new one installed on, and your stepper motor direction reversed if it needs to be. The final thing to do is update the e-steps. And this just ensures that the amount the stepper turns correlates to the amount the printer thinks should be extruded. So effectively, if you tell it to extrude 10 millimeters, it extrudes 10 millimeters rather than less or more. Most drive gears come with a value for this and then you can fine tune it afterwards if you need be. This one is 415 steps per millimeter and so that is the value I'm going to need to plug in to the printer. You've got a couple of ways of doing this. You can either connect your printer up using something like Pronterface, some sort of control panel and put in the commands that I'm going to tell you directly. You could also do that if you're running something like Octoprint, access the terminal there and put the send the g-code commands across straight away. If you don't have either of those set up or you're not comfortable doing that, then you can also just tell the commands to the printer via g-code and that should work great too. The good thing about this Ender 5 Plus is it does have programmable memory so you don't need to update this every time or mess around with the firmware. You can just put this G-code in once and save it and uh, then we'll be all good to go. Jump across now to my computer and show you that final step. Okay, so I'm going to show you now the commands that you need to do. So I've just gone ahead and created this file, which I'm calling set e-steps. And I'm gonna open it up in the text editor now. You can see there aren't many commands that are needed. We've got an M92 E415.000 and that simply sets the extruder steps to 415 steps per millimetres. Obviously if you have a different value for your E steps then this is the value you change. Then you're going to do M500 and that command literally just saves the update to EEPROM which is the programmable memory. And that's it. So you could just create a file like this and run it on your printer like you would normally and it will update your extruder steps. You should be good to go. If you have an interface set up like Pronterface or you're using Octoprint, you could just throw in this command M92 E415 or whatever your e-steps are, followed by the M500 command to save. The good thing about using an interface is you can then follow up with an M503 command and what that does is report the settings so you can see that the E steps have updated directly. 
And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. I realized I haven't gone over this in a huge amount of detail because I wanted to leave it vague enough that you could sort of follow along even if you're using a different drive gear. So if you do have any questions, then put them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to help for your specific case. Anyway, that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Cheers.